Hi, I'm Pure Excellence, the most important political mind this side of the United States. But let's just explore this idea. I'm gonna pass it to my homeboy, James. James, go ahead and take this away. 10. The Stimulus Lighthouse Alert Community Presents Winner, Draw Donald Trump's Long History of Lawsuits Part 3 Winner, Draw Although the records associating with these cases have actually been sealed by the courts, a 2016 Boston Globe short article has some info on the case. Based upon the series of occasions surrounding both our rainy and hearth's fits, it appears that they were meant to fight Trump on multiple fronts for an organization offer and personal relationship that went sour. Ultimately, both parties chose to settle the lawsuits in 1997 according to a bit from the NY Daily News. With so little details offered to the general public, it appears that this case is another draw without any clear winner. But what's intriguing about this occurrence is that both celebrations have apparently fixed up after its conclusion, with George being invited to Trump's Christmas party simply a couple of months later and Jill lobbying to work as Trump's makeup artist throughout the 2016 election. 2006-2011, Donald J. Trump v. Timothy O'Brien and Warner Books, Trump vs. Warner Books lawsuit, out of all his businesses, properties, and accomplishments, Trump's most profitable asset is his brand name. The manner in which he handles new company offers and discovers take advantage of when negotiating is through his image as a self-made billionaire. After all, his viewed success and ability in service was the primary appeal for entrants and audiences of his truth program The Apprentice. Subsequently, Trump is extremely encouraged to react aggressively when this brand name is under attack, as it remained in 2006 when a book was launched entitled Trump Nation. The Art of Being the Donald. Timothy L. O'Brien Trump Nation, How Many Lawsuits Against Trump? Image Source, Goodreads. Trump Nation was written by Timothy O'Brien, a New York Times journalist. Launched in 2005, the book is described as a real-life study of Trump's colorful and contradictory world based upon time invested with him, his co-workers, and a few of his rivals. After carrying out a substantial quantity of research study into Trump's history consisting of receiving permission from the man himself to look into his monetary records O'Brien concluded in his book that Trump's net worth was somewhere in the numerous millions. Although this definitely is still an impressive number, the truth stays that this declaration harshly contrasts Trump's long-standing track record as a billionaire. As an outcome, Trump took legal action against both O'Brien and his book's publisher, Warner Books, for $5 billion in 2006. Implicating the author and publisher of libel, Trump and his legal group testified that Trump Nation was a harmful plan filled with disgusting declarations that was meant to harm him and his organization and expert dealings, to name a few extreme criticisms. Winner, Timothy O'Brien. Realistically speaking, it does not make good sense to demand billions of dollars in damages from a publishing business and a report, no matter how effective or lauded either may be. There's simply no chance that these people or entities would be capable of paying that much money. Instead, it's far more most likely that this flamboyant litigation was suggested to force a settlement, pull the book from publication, and or reinforce Trump's image as being really worth the billions of dollars in claimed damages. This theory holds water when you think about a snippet from Trump's deposition from the case that was priced in a National Review short article. In it, the male himself stated my net worth varies, and it fluctuates with markets and with mindsets and with sensations, even my own sensations. By this logic, Trump might have felt that Trump Nation hurt his sensations, triggering his net worth to drop and for that reason providing him the legal right to sue for damages. However, the New Jersey family court system didn't agree with this line of thinking and throughout the case in 2009, later on affirming the decision in 2011 despite efforts to continue the case in appeals court. Out of all his services, properties, and achievements, Trump's a lot of profitable asset is his brand. The way that he handles new organization deals and discovers utilize when negotiating is through his image as a self-made billionaire. Trump's political lawsuits. Trump political lawsuit. In a move that surprised almost everyone worldwide, Donald Trump pivoted from a profession in company to a career in politics when he ended up being the 45th president of the United States in 2016. Nevertheless, as the near constant examinations into his administration have actually shown, he has actually still kept his habit of continuously bringing legal attention. Another disclaimer, this area won't talk about President Donald Trump's investigation by Robert Mueller for Russian election disturbance or his impeachment trial. Although both of these cases are intriguing check out the American legal system as it associates with politics, they do not technically certify as suits. Furthermore, the conversation around these subjects are politically delicate and far beyond the scope of this educational piece. Rather, have a look at these three other legal incidents in Trump's troubled experience as leader of the free world. 
2017 to 2018, Washington, Minnesota and Hawaii v. Donald J. Trump Trump's travel ban lawsuits Trump's governmental election project was focused around lots of hot-button problems, however none were more popular than the topic of migration. Among the numerous statements made by the businessman-turned-politician was the need for the U.S. to implement severe travel restrictions on several nations with a high Muslim population till, United States, representatives can find out what is going on. Although this was a highly questionable and polarizing declaration, it was a hit amongst much of Trump's political supporters and aspiring cabinet members. Due to the fact that of this, one of the first significant actions taken by the new president in 2016 was Executive Order 13769, which limited immigration, haven, and travel to the U.S. for residents from Iran, Iraq, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen for 90 days. As legal records from University of Michigan Law School program, this move was met immediately with extreme litigation from several states and organizations. Three days after the executive order was signed into law, a federal claim was submitted versus President Trump with the states of Washington and Minnesota as complainants. Four days after this suit, Hawaii was the complainant in another federal lawsuit against the president. Although a lot more lawsuits and other legal actions were filed in reaction to this executive order, these two cases involving these three states would have the most significant influence on what was described as the Muslim restriction. Winner Draw on February 3 RD the very same day as the Hawaii suit was submitted a temporary restraining order, TRO, was approved by the courts in the Washington and Minnesota case. This TRO suspended the 90-day travel ban for 90 days, successfully nullifying it. In response, the Trump administration rescinded the ban and submitted a changed version, Executive Order 13780, on March 6. This variation loosened a few of the restrictions and removed Iraq from the ban. Nevertheless, this was consulted with another TRO as an outcome of the Hawaii case, which later on became an injunction. Over the next year, these two suits would end up being fights of attrition. Many political and civil rights companies such as the International Refugee Assistance Project, IRAP, and the American Civil Liberties Union, ACLU, would team up with the state matches while pursuing their own litigation. However, after a third executive order from Trump on September 27, followed by a third TRO slash injunction granted in the Hawaii case on October 17, a conclusion was reached on December 4 of that year that eventually led to success for the administration. When the Supreme Court granted a stay on the third executive order's injunction at the end of 2017, the travel restriction was permitted to go into impact as intended. Because the greatest court of the U.S. judicial branch has the final word in the country's legal system, the case was eventually closed in spite of many demonstrations. Approximately that point, nevertheless, the plaintiffs effectively restricted the restriction's power and required the Trump administration to heavily revise it to meet their criticism. Since the time when this article was composed, the modified travel restriction stands with an overall of 13 nations on the list. 2018-2019, Stephanie Clifford v. Donald J. Trump and Michael Cohen Trump vs. Stormy Daniels Lawsuit Although Trump has typically flaunted his philandering and invited the attention it brought him in the past, he required to minimize his chauvinistic nature in order to interest Republican voters throughout the 2016 election. Because of that, the Trump campaign managers and his legal group looked for to silence his former mistresses and lovers seemingly by any methods needed. Money was the approach used with Stormy Daniels, an adult movie star who had an affair with Trump just one year after he married his third spouse. According to an archived Wall Street Journal post, Daniels whose real name is Stephanie Clifford was paid $130,000 for her silence in October 2016 by Michael Cohen, an attorney from the Trump Organization. Clifford would later on declare that she had actually been persuaded into taking the deal with thinly veiled hazards versus her and her daughter. In March of 2018, Clifford filed a civil lawsuit against Cohen and Trump in Los Angeles that claimed the arrangement was invalid and she had not done anything wrong. Not long after, she would submit another claim for libel against the president in April for rejecting her story. The civil fit specified that Trump intentionally did not sign the agreement that Cohen provided her, presumably so that he might openly disavow any knowledge of the hush agreement. In the second suit, she declared that Trump's statements on Twitter questioning her claims wrongly attacks the veracity of her account of the threatening event. Although Trump has frequently flaunted his philandering and welcomed the attention it brought him in the past, he needed to minimize his chauvinistic nature in order to interest Republican citizens during the 2016 election. Winner, Trump, however not Cohen. 
While this claim controlled the news cycle, Guard Dog Organization Common Cause filed grievances to the United States Department of Justice and the Federal Election Commission, believing that Trump utilized campaign funds to pay the hush agreement. Then, the FBI raided Cohen's office and recuperated documents connecting to the hush agreement as part of the then ongoing Mueller probe. As a result of this examination, Michael Cohen was sentenced to three years in prison for a number of monetary and political criminal offenses, including his function in the hush arrangement. Trump vs. Capital One and Deutsche Lawsuit In the wake of this series of occasions, Trump's legal group stated that they would not enforce the hush agreement, successfully stating it invalid and ending Clifford's civil match. Not long after, Clifford's defamation suit was dismissed in federal court due to Trump's statements being protected by the First Amendment. As a result of this, she was purchased to pay $293,000 to cover Trump's legal costs. When taking a look at the series of events that happened, it's hard to see Trump as anything other than the winner. The affair was successfully withheld from public knowledge till well after Trump's campaign, his attorney took the blame and repercussions for the payment, his accuser was required to pay him a higher sum than the preliminary hush cash, and the FBI investigation ended with him still in the White House. It's definitely not a tidy success, considering that Cohen is still behind bars. Nevertheless, it's a triumph however. 2019 present, Donald J. Trump and the Trump Organization v. Elijah E. Cummings, Peter Kenny, Deutsche Bank AG, Capital One and Mazars USA. Trump vs. Capital One and Deutsche Lawsuit Although Donald Trump has actually spent almost his entire life in the public eye, the quantity of scrutiny placed on him and his business transactions has actually significantly grown since he became president. Due to partisan political warfare, feverish news hounds, and federal investigations, a great deal of people would like to know about Trump's financial resources. And while Trump had actually successfully been able to fight off much of these questions, the fallout of his Stormy Daniels suits caused the New York Attorney General of the United States demanding that his banks reveal the records of their negotiations with the Commander-in-Chief. In action to this latest federal monetary query, Trump and his team went on the legal defensive. This began with a federal suit that tried to block his accounting company, Mazars USA, from sharing their records with House of Representatives members Elijah E. Cummings and Peter Kenny. According to the grievance connected to the suit, Trump's group declared that the examination lacks a genuine legislative function and was meant as a political tool versus the president now and in the 2020 election. One week after the filing of this match, Trump's legal group submitted another lawsuit versus Deutsche Bank and Capital One, two of his banks that were subpoenaed to launch Trump's records. This second match consists of comparable material to the first one however likewise mentioned that both banks face a hard choice between disobeying a federal subpoena and becoming liable to Trump by breaking his privacy. As an outcome of this conflict, this fit demands that both banks keep the subpoenaed products until the conflict over the subpoena's validity is lastly resolved in court. Winner, ongoing. Since the time when this article was written, this legal fight is ongoing. The most recent advancement in the case is that the Supreme Court will hear arguments on March 31, 2020, with the objective of making a judgment at some point in June. It's difficult to inform whether or not this future judgment will be favorable for the president, however it hasn't stopped anyone from using their predictions. One particularly fascinating point of view on this case and its potential result originates from an amicus curiae short that was submitted to the match by the Constitutional Accountability Center, a non-profit legal think tank. This brief states that the above-mentioned genuine legislative basis that both of Trump's claims declare is missing out on from the House's actions are actually present. As they put it, the validation for an examination into the president's monetary records is valid since can aid Congress's determination in legal fights based around providing practices, money laundering, and scams at banks, among other prospective criminal offenses. Furthermore, the short confirms that recognition of Congress's broad authority to investigate is long-standing and even predates the birth of the United States. Based upon these statements and the significant amount of examples offered to back them up including one from George Washington's presidency, it appears that this might be a case that Trump can't win. However, Trump has a long history of defying expectations and preventing negative effects for his actions, so who understands? Secret Takeaways Key Takeaways from Trump's Lawsuits when analyzing Trump's actions over the decades and the claims they frequently incurred, some habits and patterns begin to reveal themselves. As an outcome, these cases have actually grown to specify Trump's character in the eyes of the world for better and for even worse. However what does Trump's storied legal history teach us? Here are the most relevant and notable lessons we can gain from his frequent bouts in the United States legal system. Suits can be weaponized. The most apparent lesson that can be gained from Trump's legal history is that you can weaponize lawsuits for your own ends. 
The Deutsche Bank lawsuit from 2008 was plainly planned to work out a brand new loan repayment agreement. The Trump Nation claim was more than likely intended to daunt the publisher and author into pulling their books, and the many claims versus Palm Beach County in the 90s were to let him bypass existing restrictions and do whatever he desired with his property. To be fair, Trump is far from the only person who has actually used litigation in this method. In reality, this practice is so widespread that it's been given a name strategic lawsuits against public participation slap. According to California legal representative Aaron Morris, this term refers to a lawsuit where the plaintiff does not care whether they win the lawsuit and is only thinking about getting the offender to give up due to fear, intimidation, installing legal costs or easy exhaustion. Weaponized litigation has ended up being a major problem that threatens the stability of America's legal system, but the good news is that numerous parts of the nation deal anti-slap legislation. This indicates that successfully determining legal action taken against you as a slap in these states can have the case thrown away and harshly penalize the plaintiff for their abuse of the system. This isn't a perfect service to the problem. Lots of states still don't have anti-slap laws and there's no legislation for it on the federal level. However, it can make it easier to conduct service and criticize public figures in anti-slap states without fretting as much about unfair legal consequences. The most obvious lesson that can be gained from Trump's legal history is that you can weaponize claims for your own ends. Trump's lawsuits, settlements can be victories. Settlements can be victories. When considering simply how uncomfortable and stressful suits can be on both your mind and your wallet, it's generally in the best interest of everybody involved to cover them up as quickly as possible. It's difficult to discover sources with concrete statistics, however a 2009 study released in the Journal of Empirical Legal Studies found that the settlement rate of all legal disagreements in one district was close to two-thirds. With that being said, the basic agreement among attorneys is that it's frequently a much better idea for people included in lawsuits to promote a settlement over a trial verdict. Settlements can be seen as victories in their own right, given that they can end an otherwise painfully drawn-out courtroom battle with a compromise. However, what does Donald Trump think about ending suits with a settlement? When looking at Trump's history of suits as described by USA Today, approximately 6% of them were settled. Although this does not rather match Trump's constant boasts that he never ever settles, it does demonstrate that he's less willing to settle his legal battles when compared to the average. And in a lot of the circumstances where he did settle like when dealing with Palm Beach County in the 90s and Deutsche Bank in 2009 and ended in a contract that agreed with to him. However, a number of the settlements outlined above were triumphies for the other party, as can be seen with the cases of Central Park South and the Trump University suit. In any case you look at it, the fact stays that settling can be beneficial to reaching a verdict in a lot of cases. Whether your case gets thrown out, settled, or brought to trial and given a decision, the impacts of a lawsuit and all the delicate details it leaves in legal records can follow you for the rest of your life. Decisions aren't always the end. Yet another reason that suits can be such a nightmare for everyone involved is that they can stick around. Even when a verdict or a settlement is reached, one celebration can attempt to appeal the results of the case to a higher court. But even in circumstances where the results stand and neither side pursues an appeal, information that emerges in the case can be grounds for another one so long as it does not breach an assertion of res judicata. This is perhaps the most significant and essential lesson that can be learned from Donald Trump's long history of claims. During his 2016 term as president, Trump has actually been under almost constant legal analysis regarding his past and present actions. Trump lawsuit gavel. Take a look at how Cohen taking a plea offer throughout the Stormy Daniels hush arrangement controversy led into the Attorney General of the United States providing subpoenas to Deutsche Bank and Capital One. Now consider how willing Deutsche Bank is to operate in Trump's best interests after he sued them over his unpaid debt just 10 years earlier. Even throughout the run-up to his governmental term, claims of Trump's civil liberties infraction in the 70s and harassment of Jill Harth in the 90s were utilized as points of attack by his political challengers. Ultimately, if you believe that you've been mistreated and the only method you can settle it is through a suit, it's really important to comprehend this point. Whether your case gets tossed out, settled, or brought to trial and provided a verdict, the results of a suit and all the delicate details it leaves in legal records can follow you for the rest of your life. It's typically a better concept for individuals included in lawsuits to push for a settlement over a trial verdict. Settlements can be viewed as triumphies in their own right, given that they can end an otherwise painfully drawn-out courtroom battle with a compromise. <laughs>